Hey guys, welcome back to No Notions Travel. Uh, it's Roma here uh, on a Sunday, so it's Travel Inclusivity Day. We are introducing this video first uh, because we've got some little things to explain. So as you can see by the title, this video is called Travel as a Deaf Person. So uh, as a really exciting venture for us, this video had to take place in person and it was our first in-person interview for No Notions Travel. So we had the lovely guests Jafet and Shauna on to talk to us about what it's like to travel as a deaf person, which was uh, incredible. We absolutely loved having them on. As you can see with something like this, there was a lot of kind of, it was a complex interview to, to shoot and to film. So first thing we want to say, it was all COVID safe. We had our visors, we had our masks. Uh, one point we would like to make was that we weren't able to get window masks. Um, so that is something that definitely should be more readily available to people. Um, so we need to kind of work on that a little bit. Um, so we obviously had to do it in person. So there was a lot of other people involved in the production of this interview. So firstly, you know, we had to have somewhere to shoot. So we were so, so lucky to be able to use KidCast Studios in Drada. So we really want to thank Beth Murta for setting that up for us and, you know, just giving us, you know, such a free space to actually be able to film in. Um, it, you know, we are so appreciative because we needed to have somewhere to actually be able to film. Uh, so thank you, Beth. Um, as you will notice in the interview, there are two shots uh, throughout the whole interview. So that involved a second camera, which we didn't have. So we want to thank Keelan Malloy. Huge thank you to Keelan for coming down after work with his camera to actually set up the other shot. He had a mic, he brought down batteries in a panic, the whole lot. So we really want to thank Keelan for, for being there on the day, really helped us, you know, bring this interview to the best standard we possibly could. Um, we also want to acknowledge Colin Smith, who, which I will explain, Colin did the voiceover for Jafet. So huge thank you to Colin. This was uh, something that was so, so important to us. And, you know, your voiceovers were fantastic. So we just want to thank you again for, you know, being able to make this episode in particular as accessible as possible to everybody. So the way that we actually did it was we had our two guests come on and Shauna has a cochlear implant. Shauna was able to hear me and was able to converse back and forth, which was, you know, great conversation, no problem. And then Jafet actually spoke sign language. So I personally don't speak sign language. I did learn how to say, you know, hello, uh, what our names were, that kind of thing. We were able to learn the basics, but we weren't able to get, you know, completely fluent. So luckily, Shauna was able to interpret for us. So we had Shauna sit out of frame during Jafet's interview and when Jafet was signing his answers to the questions which he had already received in advance and they were already written down for him, uh, Shauna was able to tell us on the spot what Jafet was saying so we could, you know, react accordingly and we could be able to, you know, to be able to ask counter questions to some of the ones that we'd already provided. And then what we did was we, in post, uh, as well, Jack did it, not me. Uh, Jack br brought it into post and then we wrote the script for the lovely Colin and Colin did the voiceover for the actual, uh, the, the answers for Jafet. So we were also then able to add all the subtitles onto the video to make it again as accessible as possible. We do have subtitles on 90% of our videos, we are trying to get through them all. Um, it took us a little while to set up software for it, but we are getting there. So it is an option to turn on the um, actual written uh, captions for all of our videos, uh, not just the YouTube ones, because they don't understand the Irish accent. But these ones are actually embedded into the video, so you can't turn them on or off. So um, yeah, we want to say a huge thank you again to everyone that was involved. Um, we really hope that you enjoy this interview. It was super nerve wracking, but so, so exciting. And we're so excited that that was our first ever live interview, you know, in person, uh, not on Zoom uh, for No Notions. So yeah, really hope you enjoy it. And thank you so much again for watching.
my name is Shana, I'm 22 years of age and I am an artist. I have been profoundly deaf since I was five years old up to now. My name is Jafet. I'm 20 years old. I was born in Nigeria, but I moved here when I was four years of age. And I love to play football. Can I ask what the explanation would be of being deaf? Is there a difference between saying that you're you know, deaf from, from birth or becoming deaf as a child or an adult? Um, I don't remember much, but I was born hearing and then I had meningitis when I was 10 weeks old. Okay. So then that's when my hearing started to go down. Okay. So at year five, I was just completely deaf. I was gone. The hearing aids wasn't any good to me. Mm -hmm. And the calcium implants were new at the time. So my mom decided to give it a go with the, my left side, just my voice one. Mm -hmm. And since then, I just grew up just learning and listening and speaking. Okay, uh, yeah. so you started learning how to speak from five, really? Yeah, I was in deaf school as well, but I was yeah. just brought up in a speaking family, so I okay. speaking, yeah. Yeah, so there's no one else in your family that's deaf? No, just me. Just you. Okay, and what is the difference between a hearing aid and a cochlear implant? Well, a hearing aid, they're used to boost up your hearing, so it's like a boost of four well as a cochlear implant. It does the job of the tiny little hair cells in my inner ear and the cochlear. So I don't have any of that. So the implant does all the work for me. Okay. Yeah. And you have them on both sides? Yeah. Okay. And when did you have those? I had in? that when I was five years old. And then I only got the size like four years ago now. Okay. Yeah. And were you... You were able to hear with just the one of them then? Yeah. So um because i i know somebody else that actually has one she's quite young so i know like if you do get sick or anything like that it's very yeah. serious did you learn sign language from school like yeah the whole from way a very young age from when i was five i learned sign language okay. the whole way through and then i just sign and speak so it i mean yeah you are fluent i've watched you speak into jafet yeah. so like it's it's incredible you know like I find learning another language incredible anyways, never mind learning sign language, which is just... It's very hard to try and do sign language and talk because when you're doing sign language, it's backwards. And when you're speaking, it's forwards. So okay. you have to do it all backwards and forwards at the same time. Okay. So that's where it gets really tricky. Okay, I didn't realise that about backwards. Yeah. Because we were trying to learn it's nice to meet you yeah i think yeah that's that's perfect so is that it but is that backwards then like okay. in nice to meet you but if you say um i'm going like i'm going to the shop like i'm gonna to go to town but i could say me go where town or uh, okay. town me go okay so it's like signing it yeah i like that so sometimes it's backwards most of the time it is yeah so yeah it's, okay it's tricky but Right. You just go with the flow. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask what the explanation would be of being deaf? Is there a difference between saying that you're, you know, deaf from from birth or becoming deaf as a child or an adult? If you see someone with a small d, it means someone is deaf and was born into a hearing family. If you see a big d, it means that they were born into a deaf family. Which are you, the lowercase d or the uppercase d? I'm a small d, so I grew up with a hearing family. Okay. I'm not involved in the deaf world too much now, so I just stay with my hearing friends and family. So I'm just a little d. And um, did you go to a school specifically for deaf people or? Yeah, I went to a deaf school. Okay. Yeah, it's a St. Joseph's School okay. for Deaf Boys in Cabra as well, so it's oh. everywhere in the area. Okay, go Cabra. Do you have a hearing aid or a cochlear implant, or are you solely sign language? When I was young, I had hearing aids, but now I'm not using it anymore. Okay, can I ask why? Well, when I was small, I could hear, but sometimes the hearing aids annoyed me. I would hear things, but no one's talking. I was really confused about what that noise was. So I asked my mom, what's going on with the hearing aids? And my mom said, well, there is something wrong. 
She looked at it. She said, I can hear there's something going on with the hearing aid. There's a noise. We tried to change to a new hearing aid, but there was the same problem. It was still making weird noises, so I just stopped wearing them. And have you been deaf since you were a baby, or did you become deaf like Sean? Uh, no, born deaf. Okay. So, have you travelled much, Sean? Before um, COVID, I wanted to travel as much as I wanted to, but I just never got the opportunity because of college and school. Mm -hmm. But I did travel with the school to France and Germany. Okay. And most of us were deaf and there was a few hearing teachers, but yeah. most of us were deaf. And um, we just relied on the hearing teachers to do everything. So Yeah. And then after school, I think I went to... Bournemouth in England to see my auntie but okay. I was with my family then yeah and then I traveled to Portugal but with a couple of my friends but the friend's family is here and so we just went with them okay but the very first time we traveled was back in 2019 when we went to London just ourselves yeah that's like a deaf group going over so okay and then we just traveled in Ireland yeah oh, yeah and when you went that time with your group of like only deaf people were you the only one with a cochlear implant or...? No, uh, three, uh, two of my friends has cochlear implants, one has hearing aids and then the other one is nothing. Okay, so completely depends on yeah. lip reading and sign language. Yeah. What happens with your cochlear implants or your hearing aids if you do have to go through the airport? Um, I just heard that it's so strong that it could just break my magnets okay because it's so strong so i've never walked through it once yeah and i don't plan to if they yeah. force me i'm saying no yeah because it's so strong the magnetic field or something is yeah. too strong for little magnets so okay. um, my friend was forced to go through one in france um once we had the cocker and plant cards to say we cannot go through this yeah we had it in french as well we asked the hospital and they're like, yeah, well, and uh Helen, my friend, she showed it to the security guard and he was like, no, I'm not having any of it. You just, just go through it. And we were saying to her, like, don't go through it. And she said, I can't. He keeps pushing me to go through it. So she went through it and she said that it was okay. She was very lucky. Wow. But she was just forced to go through it. My teachers just weren't happy. No. With the security guard. Wow. Okay. So if it comes to a situation in an airport, then do you have to get like patted down or do they use like the wand or? No. Um. The first time that my friends and I were travelling to Portugal, we were meeting our friend down there. Um, we were quite young and we were really nervous. So my mum asked, can you provide some help for them too at the, the entrance? And then we were asked if we wanted a wheelchair. So they <laughs> wheeled yeah. us down to the... And we were like, no, it's our <laughs> ears, that doesn't walk, not our legs. <laughs> yeah. So um, he just brought us around and we got to the gate, but it was like two hours left until the flight is ready so they he just brought us straight up so then yeah. when we were going to london we said like just follow the number wherever wherever it is and yeah. i said to them like i i'll try listen up for announcements or whatever so I'll just try my best yeah so now we just follow the directions and do our bits and then go up to the gate okay yeah. so it worked out better actually yeah. without getting the help yeah, we were yeah. just sat there because we went to everything we couldn't come back to the shop so we just yeah. sat there just waiting. <laughs> yeah, and that's the worst part. Yeah, we were just too busy giving out about the wheelchair. Why would he ask us that? We had an episode on last Sunday about traveling with an intellectual disability, and the exact same thing happened for him. He needed assistance going through security, and they put him in a wheelchair, and he was like, But I can yeah. walk. Yeah, that so. was just the first thing they asked us, and the whole night we were like, Is he joking? And he was like, No, do you need a wheelchair? No. <laughs> My God. Okay, so is that the only part of traveling that would be difficult? Is like the security in the airport? Is the plane yeah, just, okay? Uh, yeah, because then you have to go through the physical scan. That, I don't mind it. Once. Yeah. It's a bit awkward sometimes having to go all the way around it instead of just going through. Yeah, okay, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. So do they, do they do any separate security to you then? Or Oh yeah, it's all yeah. separate and then when it's done, they're like, yeah, well, okay. you're all right. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> so have you traveled much? No, not much. I did go to America, Michigan, Washington, D.C., and Northern Ireland, but some countries I haven't touched yet. Do you want to? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> very enthusiastic. So what is it like to travel as a deaf person? It's very exciting, but it's very scary sometimes. Yeah. Because you're going somewhere completely different. It's not Ireland, and I'm so used to just doing my own thing in Ireland. But then yeah. you, there's a lot of stuff that you have to go through in the airport before you get on the plane because we have magnets in our heads. And oh. there's metal detectors, so yeah. We in Dublin they're fine because for um Broman Hospital yeah is right beside the airport, so they okay. they they know the cochlear implants. Mm-hmm. But then in other countries they can be a bit funny. Yeah, when you say to them I have this and they're just like okay, what do you want us to do about it? Can you not just walk through? And you're like you can't. That would just damage. Yeah. That so that's one thing we worry about, and then the other things are. If there's any like announcements made and we can't hear and like, oh if I'm not prepared to hear the amen- the announcements yeah and I can get anxious asking other people because I'm not used to their accents so yeah we just have to try watch out for like the bars to say whatever it's like be careful we might be delayed or whatever yeah so, like on the trains or on like the yeah you know the way it's not like welcome to whatever yeah but there was none of that in different countries and we're just looking around but it's in different language yeah. So you can't depend on it either then? Yeah. Okay. So what is it like to travel as a deaf person? Well, it's more responsible for deaf people. I can't hear people talking or talking from the speaker's announcements in the airport. I can't hear any of it. So I have to use my eyes, look around and be very cautious and ask for help. Going to the direction, so I have to be responsible for myself. So what would you say is the hardest part about traveling as a deaf person communication definitely yeah definitely communication and um like when you're going to restaurants and stuff and if, if i i went to spain one time with my family and i just wanted to try being independent and i was trying to talk to the person in the shop and he just picked out like keywords in english but mm-hmm. i just couldn't understand his accents and okay. we just couldn't communicate and i'm just there like, don't understand you and you said like I don't really speak English yeah so that's where I just called my dad in and I was like could just help me out here yeah so yeah let me tell you one story when I was in Chicago airport and I got stuck why because I was alone no family or friends there it was just me and when I arrived from Ireland to Chicago I felt there was something wrong because someone told me that I missed the plane. I was really confused. I called my mom to ask what was going on. So they rang the airport security, asking what's going on, and then my mom spoke to the staff. And they found an interpreter for me, but it was very hard. I wish there was someone who could sign and understand sign language for deaf people in airports, but there was no one there. So I would communicate with texting or with pen pads. I'd say, look around for something. Wow. So was it a flight that was missed? Yeah, Yeah. I missed a flight. And have you travelled much with other people who aren't deaf? Is that the most of the travel that you've done? That that would be my family. Um, Mm. I've always travelled with my family since a long age. And then just since then, I just thought, why not just go with my friends? So Mm. we just started off. Uh, like traveling in Ireland first with my family and then we went to different countries so they just took care of me yeah okay I went with my family so I felt like they have more responsibility because they can hear and they know where to go because they can hear people talking as well as announcements so I don't know what's going on but they can help me and tell me what to do next and I feel a little bit safer because I'm with hearing people. So have you travelled much with friends or just with family? Mostly with family, but sometimes with my friends. Which do you prefer? Well, I prefer friends. Fair. And your hearing friends, do they all speak sign language as well? Some are able to sign, some are willing to learn for me. That's really cool. Good friends. Good friends, yeah. Has being um, deaf ever stopped you from travelling? No, but 
I do get freaked out when I see news that this terrorist attack stuff's after happening and that stops me because if something happens and I'm around and I use sign language they they think it's a threat because I'm using my hand and then they'll say, put your hand up, stop talking and I'm just okay. there like mm. Yeah. Because my maths teacher went through that once he was travelling to Turkey and a terrorist attack happened and he was using his hands and he was held at a gunpoint because of his hands. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that, that puts me off and I'm just like, mm. That's, yeah, that's a very fair thing to be terrified yeah. of. You were supposed to go to the time we went to London. Um, we planned, we had that rescheduled because there was a terrorist attack in London at that time. So we had to plan okay. it later on. Right. But yeah. Oh so it was God. scary. It's like, what, what can we do if this happens? Okay. And would you rely on writing stuff then for, for other people or? Some, uh, sometimes I just get my phone and I just type it on my phone because not everybody has paper and a pen. So I just type on my phone yeah. you know, to show it to them. And of all the countries that you've been to, which country has been kind of the most understanding of, you know, your, you know, being deaf and having a cochlear implant that you may not understand the, the accent? Um, definitely Portugal. I okay. struggled a lot in Portugal. Yeah. Yeah, that was a bit hard, but I was glad that my friend's family was there because it just, it just couldn't seem to get anywhere Yeah, being deaf. Okay. It's all the same, really. Yeah. But I feel like in Gran Canaria, they accept you a lot better. And especially if you say, I'm Irish, they, ex they accept you even more. Yeah. 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 Because it's nearly all Irish people you're yeah. talking to anyway. So. Yeah. And what is it like to try and use sign language abroad? Because I, I did not know until I started researching for this episode that there is an Irish sign language. And yeah. yeah. What is it like to use Irish sign language in a different country? It's different. It's like speaking English and speaking in Spanish and Italian. If you speak in Italian in Spain, they won't get you. It's like that signing an Irish sign language. And if you come across it, that uses a Spanish sign language. Yeah. We won't be able to communicate. Okay. So it is just like a spoken language. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just have like no idea. Each country has their own sign language. Yeah. And a lot of people thought American sign language was a, like a universal sign language. Yeah. It's not. I was one of those people. <laughs> yes. I was I was asking people, do they speak ASL? And they're like, no, why would I? Yeah, so, no, I signed in one of my videos on TikTok and people were like, there's more than one sign language. And I was like, yeah. There's, yeah. Like, there's even this international sign language as well. Yeah. They have that as well. So There is like an international, yeah. like a kind of base one that everybody can try and use okay yeah wow see i the reason that i like knew of you was because your videos that you teach sign language in and particularly the one with apple and yeah prostitutes yeah, that, a lot of the time, yeah that's very common they're like i have an apple it's like mm, it's the other way <laughs> <laughs> that's how I, that's how i started learning about sign language and now even from learning little bits of sign language is like how now i'm want to know how to speak it so that or how to sign it so that if i meet anybody I, i'm able to use it so yeah, you just have to be careful what you say and you have to use the hand shapes properly in the right directions by hands yeah like you have to just be careful yeah otherwise that will happen okay can you use irish sign language abroad no not really no why because if i use irish sign language abroad they won't understand what I'm talking about. So I have to use international sign language so that they can understand me. So then I have to learn international sign language first before going abroad. If I don't, they won't understand me. And have you ever had any kind of run-ins or any great experiences when you were traveling, you know, with trying to sign or trying to explain to somebody? Um, the best experience I had was when we were going to Germany. The, okay. the orchestra bands came back then they were asking us do you want to perform in Germany okay. with us? so we were like yeah so we went over and there was different schools from Spain and then there was one from Czech I think it was and then another one from Germany yeah. and then we all came together and everybody was just using their own sign language and we were like how are we going to communicate yeah. so then we figured out the only way for us to communicate was by playing games Oh. And we all got together and we were signing to each other and we were asking about their countries. They were asking our, like, about Ireland. Yeah. And that was a great experience. Okay. 
And would that have been a mix of people with cochlear implants and yeah, hearing, hearing aids? Yeah, some have hearing aids, cochlear implants, some just none. Okay. Yeah. So would you have any advice for a deaf person who wants to travel and might be afraid to? Um, definitely plan ahead and make sure you know what you're doing and check out places like bus time ta- uh, timetables, check out the prices of taxis, mm-hmm. like just know what you want to do, write down what you want to do, book it, have everything ready. So there's like a timetable you have to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you mess up a little bit, you're going to be stuck and you won't know how to get there or communicate. So yeah. just plan ahead and make sure you know what you're doing. Okay. And does it help then to go to the, the hospital, like you said, Beaumont is right beside Dublin Airport to get yeah. the cards or? Yeah, it's very easy. You just say to them, can I have it in German? They just have it, yeah. They okay. Yeah. And is it just the card? Do you have to pay for it or anything? Oh, like no, that? it's just, they have it ready. So it goes, to, like they know that some airports can be for you. So they mm. just have all languages there okay. just in case. Right, okay. So does it help then, Um, like you were saying, like it's, difficult when they come up to you and ask if you want a wheelchair would you suggest asking for help when it comes to going through the airport yeah i would but i mean i would turn down the wheelchair stuff no the boys do ask for help just in case yeah okay so would you have any advice for a deaf person who wants to travel and might be afraid to if you feel afraid i'd give the advice to ask staff to help you all the time don't be alone don't be by yourself Have a plan and always plan ahead so that you know what to do. Just ask where to go and then say, don't tell me where to go again. Just write down in the phone or type in the phone and then they'll give you back the answer and then just go with the answer and then just go with the staff that can help and guide you. And then when they bring you to the airport, they'll sit you down and then the man or the woman will let you know what staff will be looking after you to help you get on the plane. So it's better to ask staff all the time. So one question that we're asking everybody in all of our interviews is, instead of you having to conform to the world, in what ways could the world conform to you? Is there any ways that, you know, we could progress to make the world more accessible for deaf people? It would help if everybody just take five minutes of their time and just learn a little bit of sign language, even just the basics that, yeah. like, Basic sign language is better than no sign language, yeah. so that would really help us in yeah. time. Okay. And uh, I mean, when when we say to you or deaf, don't over say things like um saying, okay, can you understand me? Like, don't do that. Stop doing that. Just speak loud and clear, and you'll be alright. Okay. Because yeah. even I learned like before this interview, I tried to learn some little pieces of sign language and. It's made me realize that, you know, I'm never going to know who I'm going to come in contact with that might need it. And it could really kind of save somebody in a situation. So I have seen deaf people struggling in town and I see the hearing people are trying to talk to the deaf person and the deaf person is trying to sign back. Yeah. So normally I just bumping and I say, I know a bit of sign language and I can speak. So let me help you. So yeah. I just help okay. them. And that, that made it really easier for them. Yeah. So that was just that they sorted Yeah. How could the world be made more accessible for somebody who is deaf? That's a hard one. I think more staff who can sign. And when you're on the plane, when the staff are like, when you put on seatbelts and everything, when the woman is giving instructions, I can't hear them. So I'm just left there. So it's better to have like a visual thing of a person signing to say, what's what's going to happen and some instructions on the plane so that would be better um and then say for our channel just as an example i figure i might ask this question while we're recording um how could we make it more accessible to deaf people we have subtitles on our videos and we do our best to get that we write up the subtitles ourselves we do our best to get them up with the video but is there any other ways that we could you know kind of make it more accessible well, just, um, for your like for this uh, subtitles mm. would be the best thing you can do yeah. and especially when you're signing uh you about signs and if you do voiceover we'll have subtitles as well so that hearing okay. people can understand what's going on okay so that would just make a lot of things easier okay so my last question it's my favorite question 
when lockdown COVID is all gone, where is the first place that you want to go? Well, I want to go to Los Angeles, California. Just America? Yeah, just all of America. Thank you um, for coming on to our episode. And we really appreciate you telling your stories and giving your advice for deaf people and for people who are not deaf. Thank you. After lockdown, where is the first place that you would like to visit? Probably Gran Canaria. Yeah. Just away from Ireland and just go back to the sun again. Just relax. That's... But I'd love to go everywhere, but Gran Canaria is just my number one spot. Yeah. And would you plan on going kind of, like, I know you're the same age as me, so I know, like, you just finished college, didn't you? Yeah, the COVID, um, COVID delayed then. my college a little bit. So yeah. just a few months ago, I just got the certificate saying okay. I passed everything. Yeah. So... Yeah, I'm finished with college. Congratulations. Thank you. And I know you're probably the same as myself. As soon as I finish college, I want to go out and just go traveling for like six, eight months. Would you like to do that? Would you be able to do, you know, going traveling for like a year? Yeah. Would you fare out okay with like using sign language or? Yeah, no, that, I mean, it's going to be hard and challenging to do that, but it's not going to stop me. I'm still going to put myself out there and do as much as I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great answer. Yeah. I love that answer. Thank you. I actually that is my favorite answer from anybody. I think is that I'm just not gonna let it stop me. So, Shauna, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on to talk about it. Thank you.